All right. Thank you, Serge, for joining us today. Um, if you can start with a quick introduction on who you are, that would be great. Hi, Arthur. Uh, hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Serge. Uh, I'm an epidemiologist and public health professional currently working in pharmaceutical industry and consulting. Um, I have certain knowledge in epidemiology and uh, pharmaceutical and healthcare industry, and that's where I'm here to bring on the table. Awesome. So why are you here? What brought you here and why do you think this is exciting? Honestly, I, uh, you know, this idea caught my attention that people are grouping uh, and trying to organize to develop certain te technologies or products to uh, help uh, solve the COVID-19 uh, issue that's happening around us. Um, and I was just thinking that my knowledge as a epidemiologist might be helpful just because being in technologies and being in API at the same time, I know that uh, certainly it's probably not quite clear to all the uh, technology people what API people do. So I might be able to bring that aspect and I was thinking, so let me just look at what this guy's doing and uh, maybe I can help to frame certain methodologies or um, approaches to the research that they are doing. So that, that what was my driver. And, uh, you know, honestly, as, as an epidemiologist, you have to pay attention to things like research in COVID-19. So it's natural attention for me. <laughs> nice. And maybe that's a good point to describe in like two sentences what, what you actually do as uh, an epi person, because even I don't, don't really know the, the specifics. Yeah, it, it's, quite, it's quite easy to um, explain. So... Epidemiologists, uh, the, we, they are working with uh, different types of medical data. So the major uh, agenda for epidemiologists is the research. So you have to be able to um, understand how to frame your research, how to create certain methodology that you want to implement. Uh, you need to have certain data that you have to either collect or find somewhere. Uh, and you have to be able to produce certain uh, research product and present it to whoever is the audience. Uh, and of course, epidemiologists, they are also uh, responsible for interventions, which means they, they uh, not just do the research and data analysis, but they also, uh, you know, they, they basically work in field as well. Um, so that's very broad. Uh, but the major aspect here is that uh, an epidemiologist, that person does not have to be a medical person, a doctor or something like that. I am not a doctor. Uh, it's more about social sciences uh, plus understanding of the medical uh, industry and medical medical sciences in general. But it's much more about the research skills. It's basically very fundamental scientific research. That's epidemiology. Yeah, and basically synthesis of information and outputting that into golf speak or fat speak or you know policy speak type of languages, right? Yes, uh, at some levels, that's also applicable, of course. Yeah, makes sense. So um, I know that you've been, um, you know, with us for just a couple of days, but what is the most fascinating thing that you've observed so far? Uh, that's hard to say what the most fascinating thing. I think the most fascinating uh, phenomena is that, you know, the way people are uh, organizing and uh, all this passion that I see in people who are working on this project, that's the most fascinating part so far. And I think it's quite fabulous that so many bright people with diverse backgrounds and uh, fantastic skills in whatever they do, uh, just gather together and uh, you know work remotely from different countries. Uh, that's quite uh, you know astonishing and fascinating. And I think I never seen such projects before in this aspect. So. Yeah, I, the best way I describe it, it it's beautiful. It's, it's yep. human and it's beautiful. All right. So uh, wh what exactly are you trying to help Corona Y accomplish? And I know that you've had a couple of conversations with uh, different people, but what's your take on it? So, so far, I only have an idea of what I can do for you. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be applicable, but uh, since you guys are working on certain product, right? At the, end, you know, at the end, it should be a product. It's not just an idea or it's not just data analysis. Uh, so 
as a person who is heavily embedded into research right now in my job and in my uh, scientific life, let's say, um, I can certainly bring that aspect to the table. I mean, in terms of helping you to shape up certain research, but more importantly, uh, I think I could participate in uh, the product management, you know, process because uh, you need to think about your users who is going to be the final consumer of your product. And if, if your final consumers are the researchers, then you've got to have uh, product managers who also know what those users want and who actually have skills in product management, which I happen to have. So um, that's very broad way of thinking. And if this is not what you guys need, I'm okay. I'm just saying that, you know, this is what I would probably try to bring to the table. Yes. Yeah. And that's actually amazing, uh, you know, impact because we are global collaboration of different people from different cultures, from different backgrounds and different skill sets and different personalities that come from different industries, which make it almost like insane in terms of the, the ability to bridge the, the different types of communication patterns and channels. And yeah, like it's, it's a huge impact that you're providing here in terms of helping us uh, formulate the things and also understand who the end users of, of the product or the platform or the results are. So thank you for that. So what's your overall, uh, overall take on the current crisis? And specifically, do you think that it has a potential um, to transform and kind of innovate how the current healthcare uh, medical system works? Um, even from the perspectives of data ownership and data sharing and, you know, changing how things uh, are right now? That's quite a complex question, has many parts to it. But uh, first of all, I am, as everyone else, I'm very shocked by the way this whole thing is developing. And uh, honestly, when this epidemic has started, I did not, as many of us, as most of us thought, didn't think that it's going to be that big as it's happening now. Um, and I think partially because that's, you know, the, the way we are getting the information about this situation is not the way it is. So we are consuming certain products, information products around us, uh, and we are making assumptions about the, the epidemics based on that. Uh, but the problem is that nobody still has clear picture of how is it working because um, even the current data that we have, even those pieces of research that we uh, can actually work on with now, it's more or less uh, not exactly what we need to make the final, you know, conclusions about this sort of epidemics. I mean, um, even when you look at the prevalence uh, or incidence, you know, uh, numbers right now of uh, COVID-19 in, let's say, state of New York, uh, that's very much, uh, you know, uh, not complete picture because we only know uh, that certain number of people has been tested and uh, they tested positive. But we also know that there are very hard inclusion criteria to get in this cohort of people who are tested. So we don't know. Once we have certain tests that are going to uh, maybe help us test people backwards, we will know uh, what number, what proportion of population uh, has been affected, you know, during all this time and even didn't have any symptoms like people might, might uh, go that way. So, um, so that's, I'm just saying that basically uh, it's very early, at least for me, uh, to say any conclusions about this. But uh, second part of your, your question uh, about the medical healthcare system in general uh, and how it's going to be affected. Well, this epidemic is a big challenge and uh, systems all around the world are cracking under this pressure. Uh, of course, it's obvious. Um, I don't think it's going to change all the aspects of data sharing just because of privacy, uh, you know, details that underlie, uh, let's say HIPAA compliance in the US, that's not going to change, you know, because all the patient data has to stay safe. But um, maybe certain public health oriented data could be more uh, available, you know, for, for the researchers to uh, take actions, you know, at early stages. However, 
to be honest with you, like for, for the researchers, I don't think there is too much challenges even now with, with the data. If they belong to research groups, they, they still can access the data in most of cases. Um, I'm not sure if, if this particular crisis is going to change that because most of the data is still very valuable. I'm not sure how it can be, uh, you know, made more open. That's, you know, that, that's a question that you need to look at the specific cases probably. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that certain types of data will become more available, yes. But I'm not sure about all sorts of public health uh, rele uh, relevant data is going to be uh, that open and that uh, accessible. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, all this crisis will just give us a better vision of what healthcare should be, you know, where we should look forward to become as a, as a system uh, globally. Yeah, it makes sense. And again, like we all, all, we have all kinds of data, like even this Cord 19 data set that White House uh, trying to, to be analyzed. And it, it is kind of open, except like no human being can possibly scan through the 47,000s of, of articles. So it becomes a challenge wow. to, to actually, you know, integrate that data, process it, and like spit out something for research community to focus on. And that's, that's kind of exactly the, the vision of uh, Corona Y in terms of uh, being that data grinder, something that grinds through massive amounts of data and is able to integrate the medical community, research community into that part of, you know, ideation to produce something that is super relevant for, for research community. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think in that aspect, uh, like I said, this is, uh, it is a journey for, for you, for us, um, because if we are working on the product, you know, that it's going to be uh, emerging from, from the, the embryo level to something tangible. And that's not easy process because you will have to take into account so many different aspects and you will have to do the research as well among the, you know, consumers as well of this problem. If, if your final consumers are uh, supposed to be the researchers, you have to, you know, basically talk to them more and find out what they want in terms of uh, the usability and everything from this type of problem. And uh, I, I think there are some, there's always certain gaps that you can fill and, uh, I, you know, my question to you would be the final question for me in this case. Uh, so what is your vision of this project in the long-term perspective beyond COVID-19? Yeah, so we're definitely trying to formulate that vision and kind of tackle future outbreaks, tackle, uh, you know, the whole healthcare and medical system uh, innovation and basically becoming this launch pad for all kinds of organizations, be it hospitals that contact us and tell us, hey, we have a bunch of data and we're not really sure how to, to build what we want. And basically equipping them with resources, with engineers, with fuel, with everything to launch these amazing ideas, rockets in, into the space. So becoming a launch pad for all kinds of organizations, creating a template and the process for them to go through and basically you know, overcome that gravity, that natural force that is out there as an external world to launch these rockets into the space. So to give you an example, like there is a, a project and group of people that is trying to uh, reinvent how the data ownership, data sharing works for individuals. And you know how in US it's very hard for individuals to extract their medical records and potentially share with anyone for a number of reasons. Obviously compliance and HIPAA are um, key important aspects of it, but also the infrastructure is, you know, very, very complex in terms of supporting those simple yet, you know, unrealistic uh, demands. I hear you. Well, uh, it happened that I was involved in projects before, uh, the projects that were targeting uh, telemedicine and data sharing aspect, what you mentioned in, in medicine, in healthcare. It's a very, very challenging, you know, um, field, just because there are so many different companies who are trying to do that. And there are some successful ones, there are some not very successful ones. Um, and, uh, and there are many, um, you know, consumers 
or let's say users or customers, potential customers who actually have a lot of different needs. And they, they, they might express that they want this and that as hospital, as a healthcare system, um, as, as a private practice of the doctors, they might have a lot of, you know, needs and desires to accomplish. However, when you get into details of how the whole system works, you understand that it's, it's actually very hard to embed something uh, very innovative in the system, which is not innovative by itself. You know what I mean? So even if you have a very brilliant, you know, product, uh, it's not always easily, uh, you know, kind of, that's the gravity you, that I'm talking about. Yes, you know, it takes exactly. a major force to lift the rocket into the space. And yeah, that's, that's definitely true. And I, I truly see this moment in time as that eye opening, um, you know, time frame. and the coronavirus being that phenomenon that uh, told us that all of these diseases, all of these challenges are not just somewhere out there, not touching us individually, the, they are here and they may as well kill us all. So that's kind of, you know, a wake up call for all the systems, for all the governance, for all the people individually to uh, make an impact, unite uh, against the common, uh, common enemies and, you know, change the status quo. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be very difficult to do, but, you know, if we can do some impact into this process, it would be fabulous. And I mean, uh, I'm all in with this because basically my whole career is in healthcare, in uh, life sciences, in epidemiology. So I, I combined a lot of different experiences. And I mean, I'm working on this already for at least nine years. <laughs> so, and uh, trying to help the relevant projects w when I have time and uh, certain uh, interests. So just like in this case. Yeah, sounds great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And yeah, just stay, stay engaged and let us know where, where we should go. Well, well, we'll, we'll get into details of how it should, you know, how we should structure our cooperation, because I mean, it, it's not, probably it's better to have some structure than just random, you know, kind of like communication. I mean, it, at least uh, that's the way I see this, but yeah. we'll get to the point. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.